Today we'll talk about distributed computing. This continues our effort to learn a lot about data processing, and it's often the case that data sets are so large now that they don't fit on a single machine. And so we need lots of different computers to work together in order to create the data-driven applications that are currently changing the world in lots of exciting ways. So a distributed computing application is one where there are multiple programs running on multiple different computers that are all working together to perform some task. Computation can be performed in parallel by many computers, meaning that two computers can be working on different parts of the problem at the same time. Information can be restricted to certain computers and redundancy and geographic diversity improve reliability. So that means we might have multiple different machines computing exactly the same thing so that if one of them breaks, the others can step in. And geographic diversity means we might have machines in different places all around the globe so that we can have a fast connection to anyone, anywhere. So here are some characteristics of distributed computing. Computers are independent. That means they don't actually know what's in the memory of each other. They don't share any memory, which means they need to coordinate in some other way. And coordination is enabled by sending messages back and forth across a network. So it's possible for two computers to communicate with each other over a network. Individual programs might have differentiating roles. So whether they're running on two different machines or two programs running on the same machine, it's often the case in distributed computing that different programs are in charge of different parts of the whole puzzle. And distributed computing for large scale data processing is now the norm. Data sets have gotten so large that they have to be processed on lots of machines, all working together because databases that hold a large amount of data are distributed across many machines and they respond to queries over a network. When you partition a data set across lots of machines, then you can not only hold a larger data set, but also process parts of it in parallel, speeding up the time of computation. And we'll talk about a technique for that in the next lecture. But this lecture is just about distributed computing in general. And in particular, we're gonna focus on the most important contribution of distributed computing and networking, which is the internet. Okay, so the internet fundamentally is focused on sending messages across a network. So computers communicate with each other by sending messages, which are sequences of bytes transmitted over a network. And messages, of course, can serve many purposes. They can send data to another computer. They can request data from another computer. They could instruct a program to call a function on some arguments. This is called a remote procedure call. Or they could even transfer a whole program to another computer and say, please execute this, which is a common way of, of distributing computation. You have it all start in one place, and the first computer's job is to distribute some programs to other computers, and then they all run together. Because remember, programs are just data as well. Okay, so messages conform to a message protocol, which is a description of the structure of the message. And this protocol has to be adopted by both the sender, which encodes the message, and the receiver, which interprets the message. So they both have to know the same protocol to understand the same meaning based on the bytes that are transmitted. So for example, message protocols could include bits at certain positions, meaning particular things. So it's always the case that the first few bytes, a byte is a sequence of eight bits, that the few bytes in a message sent over the internet have exactly the same structure. Components of a message may be separated by delimiters. So we could have a component that says this is up until the first new line. And protocols are designed to be implemented by many different programming languages on many different types of machines. So you can't just define a protocol by writing a program that encodes messages or interprets those messages. Instead, you need to write a specification that can be implemented in lots of different languages. 